State agencies are now facing another budget cut due to the Attorney General's opinion that threw out part of the budget as unconstitutional. The extra cutbacks come as tens of thousands of Oklahomans become aware of how ongoing state funding cuts will impact their health care. The State Board of Equalization certifies funds available for appropriation by state government. On Thursday, the board voted unanimously for an amount of money that actually cuts 0.12% from the budgets of 66 state agencies. That to cover just over $6 million that the Attorney General determined the legislature unconstitutionally took from the Oklahoma Promise Program to spend elsewhere. Without the money from the Oklahoma's Promise College Scholarship Program, originally known as OLAP, the state budget is out of balance. Secretary of Finance Preston Dorflanger is the governor's chief budget negotiator. He told the commission that he wanted to clear up some misinformation about what happened with the Oklahoma's Promise money. The region staff circulate information to us and others claiming that the $60 million OLAP program might experience a $294,000 shortfall in FY16 if all possible variables combined to create a highly implausible worst case scenario. Dorflinger did not address specifically the unconstitutional action, but instead told the commission the redirection of the money by the legislature was fiscally sound. The average carryover balance the past three years has been more than 18 million. The legislature was not wrong in determining that the fund could operate without the 7.9 million. As the Equalization Board was meeting just down Lincoln Boulevard, the Oklahoma Health Care Authority Board was also meeting to formalize a series of cuts in order to balance their budget, which is short by more than $225 million, 90 million of that in state funds. The cutbacks include limiting people to one visit per day to the federally qualified health care centers and rural health clinic services, and a total of four visits per month for adults, the state saving over $81,000. Elimination of payments to nursing homes to preserve bed space when a patient is transferred to a hospital for treatment, state savings over $608,000. Reduce or deny payment for preventable readmissions to a hospital that occur within 30 days of discharge, saving the state over $7 million. Increase of co-pays for prescription drugs, state savings over $3 million. Limit payments for children's glasses to two per year, saving the state $129,347. New eligibility criteria for cycle social rehabilitation services, saving the state more than $20 million, and reduce reimbursement rates to health care providers by 7.75%, state savings more than $55 million. $20 million more dollars will be moved from cash reserves to cover operational costs and a 12% cut in administrative services, which is everything from travel to postage stamps. All of those cuts were approved except for the reduction in reimbursement rates. That will be acted on in a special board meeting on Tuesday. In an interview earlier this year, Dr. Robert McCaffrey, the current past president of the Oklahoma State Medical Association, said cutting provider rates will impact some doctors and hospitals to the point of financial collapse. For some, it's going to force them just to quit because you can only lose money for so long before you simply have to say, I just can't do this any further. That's obviously the last option. And the irony of that was not lost on Dr. McAfee. We hear so much discussion uh, uh, that is against Obamacare, if you will. The, uh, and basically the state government is saying, we're going to do the same thing. The new budget also made major cuts to the uncompensated care fund used by the more than 50 federally qualified health care centers scattered across the state to offset health care services to those who have no health insurance. We went from uh, about 3.1 million to a little over 2 million, a million dollars in services for underserved communities. Brent Wilborn is the Director of Public Policy for the Oklahoma Primary Care Association, a member organization that represents the community health centers. Wilborn says increasing the copay for prescription drugs and other services to $4 for Medicaid patients may not seem like much, but for many of the people they see, that actually can be a substantial sum. They may have multiple scripts from multiple comorbidities and now uh, will have uh, 
a new copay that they've not been accustomed to and may find in some instances difficult to come up with. The federally qualified health care centers treat anyone who comes through the doors, people with insurance, people who can afford to pay, and those who are virtually penniless. That last category makes up nearly half of their clients. It's about 40% of health centers clients are uninsured. Many of them uh, will be asked to pay a co-payment amount, a nominal fee, uh, if they're at the lowest income levels of perhaps $25. Well, many times they don't have that when they come, and so they are expected to pay. It's affordable care, not free care, but they will pay $5 now, $5 when they get paid next, and over time. And the number of people showing up to get health care is increasing. In 2012, the community health centers saw 150,000 people, about a third on Medicaid. That number is now approaching 180,000. To the degree that we're restricting access, um, that may mean more demand for the nonprofit health centers that we represent who are trying to do the best they can with the limited resources that are available. A recent study of pharmacy use after the state of Oregon raised copays showed expenditures per person decreased and hospital inpatient and outpatient services increased, wiping out any actual savings. Craig Jones, president of the Oklahoma Hospital Association, says this year's cuts will affect all hospitals, some more than others. But his major concern is the financial situation hospitals will face 18 months from now. That's because the legislature rated revolving funds to balance the 2015 budget, funds that won't be there for fiscal year 2016. Because of the one-time money and some other factors, uh, it's from what we hear, the health care authorities is already going to start an additional $100 million uh, behind the eight ball, if you will. Jones says there is a funding crisis facing state government that public officials are going to have to face sooner or later. I'm not debating right now the um, whether we should lower the income tax or not, but clearly uh, it has a, uh, a sobering effect in terms of the funding that's available for state agencies that still have a high demand for the services that they provide. Medicaid in Oklahoma covers health care for more than 519,000 children and more than 280,000 aged, blind, or disabled adults. Wilborn says the cuts being made now by the health care authority will eventually lead to health care denied. We're trying to be as effective and as efficient as we can but to the degree that we already are about as efficient as we can and we're trying to do innovative models, um, at some point we're going to have to restrict services. And so that may result in, I'm sorry, we don't have an appointment for you next week. Members of the Health Care Authority's Board of Directors urged people affected by the cutbacks to contact their legislators.